Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday, where I list my top 5 of any given thing. Given? Given thing. Eh, whatever. Um, so today we are talking about my top 5 literary pairings. These are not the top 5 greatest of all time. Objectively. This is my list. Subjectively. It's what I like. Do what you do. Do what you like. And leave all them comments down there in the doobly-doo. Just know that this is not the end-all, be-all. You would think that this would, you know, this is common knowledge, but common knowledge ain't common anymore. Neither is common sense. Anyways, uh, but yeah, this is just my opinion. Uh, leave your opinions down there in the doobly-doo. Let's just jump right into it, though. At number five. All right, at number five, we have Angel and Louis. Louis, either one, <laughs> the audiobooks go back and forth talking about them. Uh, it's uh, Lewis, I'm going to call him Lewis, Angel, and Charlie Parker. Those three together are absolute perfection. Uh, anytime Angel or Lewis uh, pop up in the books, it is always hilarious. Their dialogue is always the best part of the novel. Um, and if I'm completely honest, it's the whole reason why I continued through the middle books that were really rather boring to me. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of The Reapers, uh, which is their book alone, and the new one, The Nameless Ones, is just them. And so that's why I added Charlie Parker to this, because I like the way these three characters interact. Um, they are absolutely fantastic together. I don't know why I didn't care too much for The Reapers. It's just one of those books that, I don't know, it just didn't didn't do as much for me as, let's say, the books that are more uh, Parker-centric. Um, but yeah, so this is my number five. It was almost an honorable mention, but I decided to knock one thing off. I'm not even sure if I'm going to talk about that or not, but I decided to cut one of those, one of these things off because it just didn't, even though I love them, it just didn't fit in this list if you, if you can dig it. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> number four, Joe Goldberg and Guinevere Beck. All right, number four. I almost put love here. But I think I like Beck and Joe more than I like Love and Joe. Um, the reasoning for that is because I don't know how Love and Joe's story ends yet. Yes, I still have to read. I still have yet to read You Love Me. Um, I'm I'm kind of guessing. I don't know anything about the book, but I'm kind of guessing there's a there's a there's a baby involved. I don't know. Maybe I don't. I have no idea. But someone. Someone kind of spoiled it for me. I think there's a baby involved, but there's two more books, and they might have been talking about the next one. So I don't know. But, yeah, so these two these two have such weird, great chemistry, especially for a stalker and a stocky relationship, because Beck doesn't know she's getting stalked. Whew, it's, it's rough. But when they're together, man, it's, uh, it's, it's hot. Uh, I, I don't consider too many uh, fictional characters hot, but I think their relationship, when they were together, not the stalkery shit, don't get me wrong, but I feel like they were fantastic together while they were on the page. Um, and the You series, I, oh, it's absolutely amazing series. If you have not watched it, it's on Netflix. Go and fuck that. Number three. Okay, so my number three is something... Probably not a lot of you have read, because every time I mention this book, it either has its diehard fans, or it has people who've never heard of it, and that is uh, Flint Murtaugh and Pelvis Isley from Gone South by Robert McCammon. Uh, these two characters are absolutely fantastic. They steal the show completely. Um, I'm not going to spoil it for any of you guys who, who, have, who, who have not read the book, but... Uh, and that's one of the problems with talking about something that's a little more niche and a little more unknown. Um, just like when I was talking about ink uh, last week, I didn't want to give you guys any, I hope it was last week, anyways, uh, I didn't want to give you guys any kind of uh, spoilers whatsoever for it, and I'm feeling that way now, but the thing that makes Flint, uh, well, Clint, his brother Clint is what makes Flint so great. Um, if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. And of course, Pelvis Isley, just think about what that name entails. I don't want to ruin it for you. It's these two characters, the way they interact with each other, absolutely fantastic. And the only one that's, well, only two that are better than this is number two. Theo Decker and Boris Pavl Pavlikovsky. I didn't say that right. You, it's from the Goldfinch. <laughs> um, so Boris and Theo from the Goldfinch. Reading about these two, man, amazing. 
uh, I don't, I don't know how, I, I don't know how else to put it. Um, they're, they're fantastic together. Uh, the, and I'm gonna, I know this is gonna, it, the, the, these two, I know people ship them and, and I don't, I'm not entirely comfortable with hearing about, you know, people shipping, you know, these two boys, but later on in life, I think that there should have been something. Um, I just, it was, it was so heavy in the book, um, and something that I hear they toned down for the movie, I've never been able to finish the movie, it, it bored me to tears, um, which a lot of you say about the book, and I'm just like, what? But anyways, uh, I think these two characters should have ended up together, um, or there should have been more sexual tension with them as adults, and there was some, don't get me wrong, it was a very chasey Amy, chasing Amy kind of thing, where, you know, they had their moment, and that's all it was. And they grew up, they, you know, they, they ended up in two completely different worlds, but not really. And then they end up coming back together later in life. And although I love the way the book ends, fantastic ending, I still would have liked to seen more of that. But to say more of that is basically what I got as them as younger boys, but, you know, older. I wanted to see them as mature adults dealing with their feelings, and that's something that never happened. Number one. Okay, so at number one, uh, I almost put, I'm just, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys, this was, my number five was going to be Wireman and Edgar from Dumaki. So that's my honorable mention, um, but I didn't want to do any king for this, because once again, I want to ask you guys, how would you guys like this list uh, like my top, top five Stephen King pairings. Uh, if you guys want that, then I'll do something like that. But my number one, just so you're not confused, that was going to be my number five. Um, and it ended up being an honorable mention. Uh, this one is number one, and that it always, probably always will be my number one, and that is Frances Dollarhide and Reba, I can never remember her last name, uh, from Red Dragon. This is one of the greatest love stories of all time. Period. It's not in a romance book. It's not. It, it, it's not in any contemporary. It's well. It is a contemporary, but it, it's not in any uh, quote unquote you know romantic fiction. Any of that stuff. It is in a thriller written by Thomas Harris. The love story of Dollar Hyde and Reba is. Uh, if you if you watched Hannibal season three. It's almost, damn, I think they damn near quoted the, the entire book. Um, all of their dialogue's pretty much the same. Uh, that whole arc is pretty much the same. The scene with the tiger is absolutely amazing. Um, I have not found a better coupling, a better literary uh, pairing than these two characters. I have never believed in love so much than when I was reading that book or watching Hannibal season three. Unfortunately, you have to get through the boring half, the boring front half of Hannibal season three to get to the Dollar Hide uh, story because they somehow merge Hannibal the book and Red Dragon into one season. Whatever. Um, this there, there's so much. Uh, not off-screen passion. There's just there's so much chemistry between the two actors, um, but in in it's the same chemistry that the characters have in the book. Uh, I I really don't know how else to what else to say how else to put this other than it is perfection. Um, if you ever if you have read Red Dragon or if you haven't, you go back and either reread it or read it for the first time and pay close attention to the tragedy, uh, well, not just the tragedy, but to the love that happens before the tragedy. Um, all that stuff leading up to that is, that's some, I don't want to say Steinbeck, but that's some classic level love story, and it's one of the only ones that I actually believe. Um, so yeah, that's easily my number one uh, top pairing in, in literature. I will do this again with Stephen King uh, characters if you guys want me to. Um, I'm actually kind of looking forward to it, but I want to give you guys what you want. So if you want that, definitely tell me down there in the doobly doo. Also, let me know which you know what's your top five uh, literary pairings, or better yet. Just your top five pairings ever. It could be movie. It could be any of that stuff. Or maybe just one. What's your favorite pairing? Leave all that stuff down there in the doobly-doo so we can have a discussion about it. But until next time, I have been E. You have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.